It's time for At Home with the Rubber Ducks, powered by First Energy. 640 WHLO gets you closer to your hometown team with stories of the game and updates from the season ahead. Line to left center, that's a base hit and a game winner for the Akron Rubber Ducks. Akron Rubber Ducks baseball, affordable family fun. I drive to right, that's well hit, back, back, that ball is gone, it's a home run. Here's your hosts, Marco Lanave and Jim Clark. Welcome into this edition of At Home with the Rubber Ducks and Marco Lanave joined by Jim Clark. This is the first time we actually get to record this while we're sitting in our usual summer home in the home radio booth. This feels pretty good. Yeah, a little different. Um, it does. It feels almost, I guess the word is normal. Well, Jim and I have enjoyed calling uh, some high school games. Four high school games in the month of July were the senior spotlight games at Canal Park. You can go back and listen to those on the Akron Rubber Ducks podcast via the iHeartRadio app. And, uh, Jim, I know you and I both really savored that, and I think the programs and the kids did as well. Well, they get a chance to meet one more time, which is great. They also do it on a pretty much a big league ballpark, which is even better for them. Speaking of the big leagues, we'll have a couple of conversations this week for you, uh, including one with the Rubber Ducks manager, Ruglas Odor, explaining how the minor league players, those who are not part of the 60-player pool for the Cleveland Indians, are being instructed and still uh, try to do some development as well. Now everybody's learning to do uh, stuff over Zoom, Jim, and... Rugi did point out what I think both of us know is in that games are really the proving ground for minor league players. Well, you worry about guys who are not part of that 60-man pool. And you're right. You can sit in the backyard and take swings all you want. You can throw bullpens, but you need games, and they're not getting those. So those guys are working uh, virtually, working remotely, but they are getting together as a group uh, every week over uh, video chats and that sort of thing. And The Cleveland Indians, of course, have started their season. And as you listen to this edition of At Home with the Rubber Ducks, uh, finishing up the series in Minnesota against the Minnesota Twins, the first time that the Indians will have their uh, radio broadcast done uh, sort of remotely. And, Jim, you got an inside scoop with Jim Rosenhaus. Yeah, Rosie talked about what they expect to get out of it. Um, He's enjoyed the home games. He misses being in the ballpark. He misses most interaction with players, other personnel, but... Their pros will get through, but Jim explains the whole situation very well. Well, we're looking forward to that. And again, a reminder for all of our listeners, you can get a discount in the Rubber Ducks online team shop. 20% off Rubber Ducks caps. Just use the promo code radio at checkout. And again, we appreciate you supporting the Rubber Ducks, of course, uh, during this unique time. And uh, here we are in August already at home with the Rubber Ducks. But... Now let's join our conversation with Rubber Ducks manager Ruglas Odor. He was joining us from his home in Florida, where he's been uh, keeping up with his two sons, who are baseball players, as well as, of course, many of the players who would have been targeted for Akron here in 2020. So here's the conversation with Rubber Ducks manager Ruglas Odor. Rugi, first of all, we've uh, caught up with you uh, just a few months ago, but uh, how are things going for you right now? Um, so far, so good. I'm spending a lot of time here with my family in Winter Haven, Florida, and everyone is uh, healthy and everybody's doing fine. Thank you. How are you spending most of the days during this summer? Uh, right now, things are starting to kind of uh, be, I wouldn't say normal, but we've seen some more activities. And uh, I have a 16-year-old boy that he plays baseball, and he has been playing a few tournaments. You know, the, the COVID-19 cases are starting to spike up here in Florida, so I don't know if they're going to be able to continue to play those baseball tournaments. But uh, I'm spending a lot of time on a baseball field, uh, I would say, these last three, four weeks uh, with him and with my other son that uh, is going to be a senior in college. So and also in the computer. So we're doing a lot of remote coaching too in the Indians organization. And to talk a little bit about how that remote coaching works, um, uh, how how does that work and and how long will that continue, do you think? Well, we have have a program and we have another uh, five to six weeks left to finish it. And um, we get to talk to the player just like we're talking right now. And um, Mondays, uh, our long days because we have staff meeting 
we have a team meeting, and then we have what we call performance team meeting. And every Monday we talk about four players, and then late that Monday I have two one-on-ones, which is uh, meetings personal with each individual player, and we go over their fundamental part of the game, the mental part of the game, and the physical part of the game. And um, and then on Tuesday we we continue to have more individual. Uh, meetings with the players, but it's more the pitching coach, uh, the hitting coach, and then uh, whether we have an outfielder or we have a catcher. And so every single day we we do something with players. And like I said, we have another five to six weeks left. Now, is that a setup where like you get you get to watch video of them working out or are they talking to you? How does that work? We do both. We do both. So they send us videos uh, every week. So uh, if it's a hitter, he send the video to the hitting coach. If it's an infielder, he send it to me. If it's a catcher, he send it to Wyatt Torregas, which is a catching coach, and also he's going to work with the outfielders. And obviously, if it's a pitcher, uh, he's sending the video to the pitching coach, who is Tony Arnold. And then... Uh, what we do, we get to to watch the video and we get to discuss what is it that he's doing, and 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 that's how, that's how we're doing our our coaching right now. Nice. Now, normally during a season, you would be managing uh, at, at one time, you know, twenty five guys on a team. Is there some team aspect where you get together? Hey, this group that we call that we call the Akron Rubber Ducks or or the Double A group or anything like that. Yes, every week we do it once a week, at least once a week. And, and we do it every Monday where um, I get to see every single player. They all get to see me. And uh, we talked about, you know, how the past week went and if we need to make an adjustment and what is it that uh, they need uh, from all of us. And But, yeah, we do have a team meeting every single week. And we all do it. It's not just me. Every single minor league manager gets to to talk to his team at least uh, once a week. With no games and no season for the, the players that you're working with, what what do you think gets missed the most uh, in their player development that, that, that they would have had with a season and games? I think it is, is their development because they are practicing a lot right now, but we know that it's all about executing and making progress during the game. We don't know, as coaches, as managers, as staff members, we don't know if they are, make, if they are making progress because they're not playing baseball games. Uh, during practice, yes, they're making progress, and, and it's huge that they're working and they're, they're getting better. Now, are they going to be able to do that during the game? We hope they are going to be able to do it, but only the game is going to tell us if they're making progress or not. So I think that would be that would be the main the main area for me. And obviously, uh, not a, not able to to talk to the player and face to face. You know, not able to to help him. You know, do some of the uh, drills and 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 the coaching that we usually do. You know, that's another thing. But but I would say the main one is if they have been making progress because they're not playing games. Yeah, you mentioned that that progress. Are there some things that you can still measure in this setup uh, that you could to measure their progress uh, from a, a remote setup? We have a couple of players who they have the rap soto and and they have the blast, and that's that's a plus because as a pitcher you kind of you see what the baseball is doing, so you know you're making progress. As a hitter, you see what you know the the bad but what the swing is doing so you are making progress but not every single player has it and by having those devices you know they they can tell us if they're making progress or not there are some other things that uh, you know i can talk about infielders you know glove position i can see that on a video you know i can see their movement i can tell you the other day i saw monasterios a video and right before he was going to field the ground ball, he was bringing his hands too close together before he was fielding it. And we talk about eliminating that move because that move is, is not necessary. 
And then next week, he sent me another video and I didn't see his hands closed together right before he was going to feel the ground ball. And he called me, hey, Rugi, did you see that? I made that adjustment. So there are ways of, of evaluating the players and there are ways of uh, making this work. And that's what we're doing. We're doing our best to help the player out. And, uh, and obviously, it's not going to be the same because playing the game is, is, is where they're going to really show the improvement. But yeah, there are some ways where, where we can see the improvement. That was Rubber Ducks manager Rugless Odor, and this portion of At Home with the Rubber Ducks was brought to you in part by Ambridge Hospitality, Fairfield Inn and Suites, and the Courtyard by Marriott, all partners presenting Rubber Ducks baseball. Stay tuned. After the break, we'll come back with more of the conversation with Rubber Ducks manager Rugless Odor. You're listening to At Home with the Rubber Ducks on 640 WHLO, your new home for Akron Rubber Ducks baseball, powered by First Energy. Here at Sarah Auto Park, community service has always been a priority of ours. These days, that spirit is more important than ever. Join us as we do everything we can to take care of our doctors, nurses, all other essential businesses, and their employees. If our community needs us for anything, even to safely get a bag of groceries to our most vulnerable, we're here. We'll get through this together. Sarah Auto Park. This is Rubber Ducks broadcaster Marco Lanave. When people ask me who's the number one pick for print and copy solutions in the Akron area, I tell them Meritech. The pride of the Rubber Ducks for the past nine years. Meritech's roster also includes IT consulting, cloud voice and data services for a powerhouse lineup to reduce risk, control costs, and increase productivity. So call Team Meritech today and tell them the Rubber Ducks sent you. Meritech Technology to empower your business. Exceptional care means having access to world-class physicians and services. That's the care Cleveland Clinic Akron General provides to Akron and the surrounding communities. Whether it's primary care or specialized services, we put your needs first with care that is comprehensive and best of all, close to home. Cleveland Clinic Akron General is committed to the community and your health. To learn more about our services close to you, visit akrongeneral.org. KeyBank makes it easy to manage your money anytime, anywhere. I am crushed for time. KeyBank can help. How? And how soon? You have a smartphone? I have to. It keeps me organized. Download the KeyBank mobile app and then use your phone to deposit checks on the go, transfer money, even pay bills automatically. Awesome. Indeed. Learn how you can make even more financial progress when you use the red key. Only at KeyBank. Visit key.com or your local branch. Member FDIC. Are you looking for a great apartment with the best location? Fur Hill Towers Apartments is just a five-minute walk to the University of Akron or a five-minute drive downtown. You'll find spacious living, convenience, and fun with a wide variety of restaurants and entertainment just outside your door. Perfectly suited for young professionals and students on the go looking for off-campus living. Stop by 55 First Street Hill, Akron, or call 330-762-7000. That's 330-762-7000 today and reserve your apartment home. For a lawn that looks as good as Canal Park, depend on Grassmaster. They're a locally owned and operated full-service lawn and landscape company. The development of a healthy and attractive lawn or landscape requires a great deal of time and hard work. It's Grassmaster's commitment to providing the necessary ingredients of knowledge and treatment materials to develop a healthy and attractive lawn or landscape. By choosing Grassmaster as your lawn and landscape company, you are assuring that your investment is protected and will grow in value year after year. Visit thegrassmaster.com. Everyone at Honda wants you to be safe. And right now, you need a car you can count on and your dealer to go the extra mile. So if your Honda needs parts or service, we're right here ready to help. Working to follow all government guidelines in order to get you what you need and help you stay safe with a reliable car that's ready to go when you need it. Visit northernohiohondadealers.com. 
Your business has a story to tell. Let Fast Signs Medina help you using the right mix of visual communication solutions like signs, banners, digital displays, fleet graphics, mobile marketing, health and safety communications, and so much more. Give Fast Signs Medina your business challenge and we'll come up with a plan to grow your business, reach more customers, and accomplish more than you ever thought possible. Fast Signs Medina, more than fast, more than signs, more than ready to help you grow your business. Call today and say go Ducks for your discount. Count. This is At Home with the Rubber Ducks on 640 WHLO. Deep drive out to right field. Rafaela turning, watching. It's gone to the Bud Light Line Tiki Terrace. Your new home for Rubber Ducks baseball powered by First Energy. Welcome back. This is Marco Lanave, and this portion of At Home with the Rubber Ducks is brought to you in part by Precious Cargo Trailways and Stanley Steamer both partners in the lineup presenting Rubber Ducks Baseball. We now continue the conversation with Rubber Ducks manager Rugla Sodor from his home in Florida. Hey, Rugia, I, I want to ask you because, um, you know, we, we read a lot in the media about um, how Major League Baseball is doing things, and then we hear some reports about how organizations are treating their minor league players. Can you give us sort of a general idea of What's on the mind of some of these players in this, in this situation? Like, what, what, what are they thinking about, and, and what's, what have you noticed? Well, first of all, we told them that we were not going to play minor league baseball. They were very disappointed, and uh, it was understandable. Uh, we, we knew that they, most of them were going to feel that way, but... But that happens for like a couple of days. You know, after we told them that we were going to have remote coaching and we went through what remote coaching was going to be all about, now I, I can feel and I can sense that they really like what we're doing. Is, is, is it different? Yes. Is it challenging? Yes. Is it uncomfortable? Yes, because we're not with them. But they know that we're doing our best and we know that they're, they are doing their best. And... Um, and that, that's what we're doing. Every single day, we're doing something to help the players out. We have an educational meeting in the pitching department, the hitting department, every single domain that we have, whether it's mental, physical, or fundamentally, we're having those educational meetings and they appreciate what uh, the organization is doing for them. In this you know, unique situation. Each organization has sort of been dealt the same, you know, situation of how do you keep in touch with players and, and how do you do things? I know you've got lots of connections in the game of baseball. Is there anything that you, you've picked up or, or that the Indians organization really has done, uh, you know, sort of uniquely as compared to what you've heard from other people in the game? Uh, well, I think the, the way we're communicating, I think it might be a little different. We do it every day with with the players. I don't know if other organizations are doing it. I'm sure some of them are doing it. I have uh, uh, some friends that they are doing it to a certain extent. But I think the the every single uh, day, the commitment that, that we're showing to the players, the desire that they are showing to get better, I, th I think that's uh, helping us out. And, and the players, they can sense it, they can feel it, and they know that you know, we're here for them. And if they need anything in any area, we'll, we'll do our best to help them out. Now, some guys who were with the Rubber Ducks last year are now either with the Indians currently with the big league team or at this alternate training site. Um, did you work with any of those guys before uh, the, the summer camp started uh, at any point remotely? I had Tyler Freeman in my club but right before we were going to start with remote coaching he was sent to 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 the 60 man roster so we just worked for one week and he was in one of the meetings and then after that yeah he uh, i mean he didn't have the time to to be doing the remote coaching because he's in in lake county but um yeah they they uh you know they're they're doing a good job there the fact that they have that group of players have the ability to be on a baseball field with, with the coaching staff and coordinators and, and some uh, people who are helping them out, you know, that's huge because ultimately you, you want to have, you know, your coaches next to you so they can help you in your development. 
Now, of course, the, the minor league season did get officially canceled at the end of June. So we're sitting about a, a little over a month uh, from when that was officially announced. But uh, before the announcement and before it became clear that the minor league season could not happen, how much did you guys like talk about some of the protocols that, you know, the, the big leagues has all of these different protocols. Did, how much did you talk about protocols that you might have to, to follow at the minor league level if a season did happen? Oh, we did talk a lot because we had a very close communication with the medical department. And when we were meeting as a team, you know, Bobby Ruiz was the one who was relaying the message that uh, the medical department was telling us, but we also met with the medical department. So uh, we were prepared. We knew that uh, following the protocols was very important. We were talking to the players about it. We were sending messages through emails, text, and uh, that, that was the main message right before we started with the remote coaching. It was all about following the protocols. It was all about staying healthy, uh, doing what they can. Uh, we were not expecting them to find all the players or find baseball fields and go some some places where they uh, were supposed to work out. We were just asking them to to be safe and to do what they can at home with somebody or by themselves because uh, health was number one. It's still the number one thing that. Uh, you know, we're asking the players. Yeah, Rugi, you mentioned that you, you're going to continue remote coaching for a, a, a few more weeks. I guess, is that going to be until the end of what normally would have been the season? Correct. Yes. Yep. So beyond that point, uh, is there anything that has changed or maybe you haven't discussed this yet? Is there much that will be adapted uh, to prepare for 2021? Because it won't be like preparing for a normal season because it'll be so much time since they, they played in games. Right. We don't know what's going to happen. Uh, hopefully uh, things with the, uh, you know, pandemic are going to get better, but we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know if we're going to have some type of like uh, instructional league or the players are going to be on their own uh, getting ready for spring training next year. So, we just, uh, right now, we're just concentrating on finishing strong with remote coaching, and, and, and we'll know more later, you know, during this next four or five weeks. Rugi, I know uh, these past uh, several months, those of us in baseball have had a lot more time to uh, think and reflect and, you know, maybe grow a little bit, uh, you know, internally. Anything that you've sort of learned about yourself or feel like you've grown uh, from the last, well, four and a half months or so of, of this? You know what, this is, this is my first time in a long time that I get to spend this time of the year with my family, not, not doing anything related to baseball, other than remote coaching. And um, uh, just, just to hear my kids saying that, thank you for helping us out. That's a great feeling. I mean, they are really appreciating that I'm doing my best to help them out here at home when for 33 years I've been, you know, working on a baseball team away from, from home, except the, the years I worked here in Winter Haven when I was in charge of Extended and the Rookie Ball Club. But, um, yeah, it's just uh, you put things in, in perspective. You know, you know that, uh, I mean, family is, is, is everything, you know, you have and relationship, you know, uh, friends, keeping in touch with people, calling people, you know, I'm, I'm not a big person on calling people. And, and yeah, he, he, I've learned a lot about, you know, staying in touch, you know, with your real friends. And, but, but I would say family, spending time with, with my family has been a, a huge, huge thing for me. Well, Rugi, we're very grateful that you've been staying in touch with uh, all of the, the players in the Indian system and staying in touch with us as well. I know this has been quite a unique year, but we appreciate the chance to catch up with you. Oh, thank you, Marco. Thank you very much. And I wish you the best of luck. Stay healthy. And please say hi to everyone in Akram. That was Rubber Ducks manager Ruglas Odor. And this portion of At Home with the Rubber Ducks was brought to you in part by Stouffer's 
and Habitat for Humanity of Summit County, both on the team of partners presenting Rubber Ducks Baseball. Coming up after the break, Jim Clark visits with Cleveland Indians radio broadcaster Jim Rosenhaus. That comes your way after this break. You're listening to At Home with the Rubber Ducks on 640 WHLO, your new home for Akron Rubber Ducks baseball, powered by First Energy. This is At Home with the Rubber Ducks on 640 WHLO. Really home it is. Not in time. Two-run double by Mejia. Akron now leads it 6-2. to two. Your new home for Rubber Ducks baseball, powered by First Energy. Welcome back. This is Jim Clark. And this portion of At Home with the Rubber Ducks is brought to you in part by Suma Health and Diamond Deli, both presenting Rubber Ducks Baseball. We're talking with Jim Rosenhaus, one half of the radio team on the Indians Radio Network. And, Rosie, thanks for taking the time to talk with us today. You're welcome, Jim. How you doing? Pretty good, Rosie. Um, boy, thinking back to March when it all came about with the really shutting out of baseball, did you ever think it would look like this come July and August? You know, I'm trying to remember what the thinking was. And, and I remember thinking, uh, I think at the time when spring training was shut down, there was still that talk that, well, opening day is so many days away and we'll shoot for, you know, March 26th. I think that was pretty well out, but maybe early April. But I think very, very quickly it turned where, it was going to be a while, and then you didn't know what form it would look like. But, um, you know, as time went by, it, it, this is what it developed into. So, yeah, at the time of the shutdown, no idea that, that it would just be a 60-game season with expanded playoffs and, and some different rule changes and things like that. Did not foresee that at all. Well, you kept busy, as you do throughout spring training, with – but the Rosie report, you had the simulated recaps, tribe talk, and they ran the streak back on the flagship station. So you were always doing something. Yeah, you know, it, it's funny. Um, I wouldn't say that I was busier than, than in a normal season, but everything was different. So you'd, you'd get to the end of your days, and it wasn't what you'd normally do during a season. You kind of get into that rhythm and routine of, of a game day and, and game day after game day. And, and so that becomes comfortable. Um, so this was different. And, and you got to the end of a day, and you're like, boy, that's a pretty busy day for, for not having a game today, um, which is good. Um, obviously, you miss the game, and this season is, is so different. But um, hopefully it'll be, you know, something fun for the fans here for a couple of months. And, and uh, who knows, maybe the Indians are, are in it in the end. What was your impression the first time with no fans in the ballpark, um, just looking around and just seeing no one? You know, I, I think, I don't know if disappointed is the right word, um, just because, I mean, it, it was inevitable and, and there was no alternative, but it, it it's disappointing and sad. I mean, it, the game is better when the fans are there, and, and that's not just me saying that. Uh, player after player and, and coaches and managers say the same thing. It's just not the same. Um, and I think to some extent, um, you know, you've heard some players say that uh, not that they take the fans for granted, but maybe they didn't really realize what an impact they have on, on just the day-to-day -day until they're not there now. And, and it's so different. I mean, um you know, we have the piped in crowd noise. So it, probably if you're listening on the radio and, and you're not following on TV, it, it might not sound that much different. But as we watch it, um, it was like Francisco Lindor when he hit a home run the other day. Um, he hit the home run and it just kind of rattles around in a bunch of empty seats in right field. And that's kind of a bummer because there's no, you know, roar of the crowd as the ball's in the air and then that kind of hesitation to see if it'll make it and then the big roar when it clears the fence um that's all of what makes baseball fun and and that's not there but um you know for good reason and and hopefully at some point we can get back to to fans that I, I, I have a feeling it's not going to be until next year but um you know hopefully at some point we can get back to that because they really are missed is your prep any different jim not so far. Um, you know, with the road games, it, it might be a little bit different, but um, not so far. I mean, you know what, Jim, the, the biggest difference is just not being able to, to head downstairs to the clubhouse and the dugout and the field 
to talk to players and, and in just a casual setting, not even an interview setting, but just to, you know, Shane Bieber walks by, Hey Shane, how you doing? Um, go one last time out. What, you know, and then that leads to maybe some things that were working and things that didn't just in casual conversation. And, um, so you miss that kind of stuff. Um, but again, for good reason, uh, they are trying to limit the amount of people that come in contact with players. And if that means the, the broadcasters and everyone associated with that, then that's a good thing. And then, you know, we're happy to be on board with that. So that's probably the biggest difference in terms of prep. But um, actually, you know, they've, they've been able to, to funnel different guys to us on the Zoom calls to talk to them. And, and that's been extremely helpful. And um, you get the same statistics and all that kind of stuff and game notes that you always did. So that's not different. So really just the biggest difference is not having the, the clubhouse and field access. But we're working around that with the Zoom calls and, and actually trying to fill in the gaps that way. And it's not too bad. Now, the team goes on the road. You guys are, of course, staying home. Were you surprised that they did not send two guys on the road? Um, you know, I think when I, I heard the initial rumblings a little bit, but then when when you really started to understand the protocols that, that they're putting the players under, it completely made sense. So... From that standpoint, no. But initially, sure, because it's something different than what you're used to. And you're like, well, why wouldn't we be a part of that? But I totally get it. And you can say, well, it's only two people. What's the difference if they added those two? But, you know, there's TV, too, and, and those guys would want to go. And, and where's the cutoff and that type of thing? So um, it's really, considering the circumstances we're under, um, it is not a big deal. Uh, we'll have fun with, with calling games off the monitor and, and hope to go back at, at some point in time whenever they tell us. Now, how many will you have? Will you have more than one monitor? And you will be at the ballpark, correct? Yes, and, and it looks like we'll have three really big ones and, and then maybe some smaller ones, but uh, there'll be that game feed that, that the fans would see just on, on regular television. We'll have that. But then they're gonna, they'll have like a high home plate camera so that we can see all nine players all the time, uh, which should make it easier to, you know, to follow an outfielder or tracking and, and maybe, you know, just see how certain plays develop. Uh, I think there'll be a uh, like a four split screen of, you know, one one quadrant would have the bullpen, another might have the scoreboard and, and some other things. So, I, I think we'll be covered. Um, that. You know, that until we actually get into it, we, we probably don't know for sure, but that's what they're telling us we'll have. And, and just talking to some other broadcasters, it does sound like it's worked out just fine. And that's some fun stuff. Um, when go, going through the first six games at home, have you ever seen starting pitching six consecutive games this consistent and really this good? You know, certainly not at the start of the season. Um, I I'm trying to think if, you know, there, there has to have been some stretches with, with the way the starting rotation here has been for a while now, albeit with some different names. Um, there's probably been some stretches of, of about a week of this, but just not. I think what's surprising is it's at the start of, of a season, and it's at the start of this season, which is so unusual in terms of the buildup. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's um, – I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't be surprised based on, on the work ethic and the character of these guys and, and what they had been saying when they got here, that they're ready. They had been working at it in, in various ways to be ready when summer camp started, and they sure have been ready when the bell has rung. That was Jim Rosenhouse, and this portion of At Home with the Rubber Ducks is brought to you in part by Planet Fitness and Melt Bar and Grill, both presenting Rubber Ducks baseball. More with Rosie right after this. You're listening to At Home with the Rubber Ducks on 640 WHLO, your new home for Akron Rubber Ducks baseball, powered by First Energy. Are you looking for a great apartment with the best location? Fur Hill Towers Apartments is just a five-minute walk to the University of Akron or a five-minute drive downtown. You'll find spacious living, convenience, and fun with a wide variety of restaurants and entertainment just outside your door. Perfectly suited for young professionals and students on the go looking for off-campus living. Stop by 55 First Street Hill, Akron, or call 330-762-7000. That's 330-762-7000 today and reserve your apartment home. There aren't many things in life that are easy. There's easy listening music, easy chairs, easy money... 
But did you know that you can enjoy all three while getting rid of your old energy-wasting refrigerator? You can schedule a pickup without moving from your easy chair. We'll haul it away and even pay you for it. So go ahead, take it easy, and let us take it from here. First Energy's Ohio Utilities will pick up your fridge and you'll get $50. Just visit EnergySaveOhio.com to schedule a pickup. Now that's easy. What's better than a good steak? A great steak at a great value in a fun place. Texas Roadhouse. From fall off the bone ribs to made from scratch sides, we've got something for everybody. Great steak at a great value. Texas Roadhouse. Located at 4310 Lake Point Corporate Drive in Stowe. And now offering drive through carry-out, and curbside service. Visit texasroadhouse.alohaorderonline.com or call 330-920-9844. Bridgestone Drive Guard tires deliver a clutch performance that won't leave you stranded on the side of a rural road or a busy highway. They're engineered to take a puncture and to keep running up to 50 miles after a flat at 50 miles an hour. Plus, you'll get the smooth, quiet ride and impressive treadwear life you've come to expect from Bridgestone tires. Let the clutch performance of Bridgestone Drive Guard tires give you peace of mind. Bridgestone, proud sponsor of the Akron Rubber Ducks. Here at Sarah Auto Park, community service has always been a priority of ours. These days, that spirit is more important than ever. Join us as we do everything we can to take care of our doctors, nurses, all other essential businesses, and their employees. If our community needs us for anything, even to safely get a bag of groceries to our most vulnerable, we're here. We'll get through this together. Sarah Auto Park. No savvy traveler likes long lines or waiting around. So, lucky for you, the Akron Canton Airport is easy and fast. With affordable on-site parking, quick check-in, and short security lines, you'll be through the airport in just minutes. CAK gives you more freedom to enjoy the things you love, like vacationing. With low fares to 11 non-stop destinations and just one stop to the world, book your next adventure from CAK. Rubber Ducks fans, check out City Barbecue in Fairlawn for the best barbecue in town. I gotta tell you, City Barbecue is the best smoked meats I've ever experienced in my life. Literally the best beef brisket sandwich I've ever had. Definitely the best barbecue I've ever had. My best all-around barbecue experience ever. Best barbecue around. Some of the best barbecue I've personally tasted. I highly recommend this spot for some of the best BBQ you'll ever have. Visit citybarbecue.com or stop by 2870 West Market Street in Fairlawn. Everyone at Honda wants you to be safe. And right now, you need a car you can count on and your dealer to go the extra mile. So if your Honda needs parts or service, we're right here ready to help. Working to follow all government guidelines in order to get you what you need and help you stay safe with a reliable car that's ready to go when you need it. Visit NorthernOhioHondaDealers.com. This is At Home with the Rubber Ducks on 640 WHLO. Here's the relay. The throw home will not be made. That's an inside the park home run. Your new home for Rubber Ducks baseball powered by First Energy. Welcome back. This is Jim Clark. And this portion of At Home with the Rubber Ducks is brought to you in part by Visit Jacksonville and Gardner Pie Company, both presenting Rubber Ducks baseball. Now more with Jim Rosenhaus. Well, the Akron fans want to hear about these guys. Boy, watching Aaron Savali first, boy, was he good. Yeah, um, and, you know, he's been good from the get-go. The inner squads, the exhibition games, uh, right away he was throwing close to 100 pitches. So uh, he really continued what he was getting to in spring training during the shutdown and, and came into camp in great shape. And um, he's a pleasure to watch. I mean, he's not he's not a radar gun guy, although – uh, he certainly throws hard enough. He's up over 90 miles an hour, but his stuff is so good. It moves so much, and he has such good command. And then you throw in the, the preparation in terms of scouting reports and understanding how to work those. Um, it's really you know, a complete package, and he gives himself a chance more often than not to have success. Then you get Zach Plezak Wednesday night. He goes eight, shutout ball. That was, that was really fun to watch. Yeah, he's a, you know he's another one who I, I think used the time away to his advantage. You know, I think some players just tried to stay the same. Others struggled to even do that, and then others took advantage of those three months and got better. And and that's what Plesac did. I think Zach, you know, he had a good winter, 
and was firing bullets from the get-go in regular spring training. And then he's been able to to not only keep that but augment it and, and come into summer camp in great, great shape and in a good spot that really shined through for sure on Wednesday night. And then your number six guy, which is hard to believe, is Adam Plutko, and he follows suit. Yeah, and, and you know what, Jim, it's going to be interesting to see um, – how often he's used. I mean, obviously, if there's an injury, he'll be used. But, um, you know, they plugged him in and bumped everybody back to give everyone an extra day. So, you know, it, the Indians feel very comfortable in using him, especially if it helps the, the health of the other starting pitchers and keeps them sharp. Now, you don't have as long a season to get through this year, but they do want to be careful here at the outset of overdoing it. So, they had an opportunity to plug him in because of the double header, and it's worked out great because now you line it up with Bieber at the start of the rotation for the Minnesota series, and everything else falls into place. And and you can't do that if you don't have faith in a pitcher who probably would be in a lot of starting rotations throughout baseball. Uh, but you know he's the sixth guy on on a great starting rotation with the. And, Jim, as you know, as we found out, it seems like every year at some point, you never have enough starting pitching. No, and we saw that last year. Um, I think that was an extreme. Um, you hope that doesn't happen every season. And maybe it won't this year because uh, of the shorter time frame. I mean, you're looking at 10, 11 starts for a starting pitcher this year, which is, I mean, a drop in the bucket compared to the 30-plus the that a big-time starter gets normally. So, um but it is good to have, have that depth, and, and they have let go, and they have some other guys at the alternate site as well, chomping at the bit, waiting to get going. So I think they feel pretty good about the depth of their rotation. It seems like when Shane Bieber comes out opening day and does what he does, and then Carlos, what a thrill to see Carlos out there starting again. The other guys, they don't want to let anybody down. There's something to that. Um, Zach Blesak talked about that. He, not necessarily the letting down part, but he said, you know what? I'm sitting here waiting for my start, waiting, 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 and I'm watching all these guys go out there and, and pitch tremendous, and it fires him up, and he wants to be a part of that. So, you know, you, you want to follow suit when everyone else is doing well, and, and this is a, a tight-knit bunch. They bounce ideas off each other all the time, and, and they're trying, all trying to help each other out. So, um, you know, even if you're you're five days away from your start, you're still thinking about it while you're watching someone else go out there and pitch really well. And, and then they, you know, they talk about how they got hitters out, especially if they're facing the same team. So it's just a really good dynamic. And two guys we had in Akron who have done so well who are really climbing the ladder quickly. James Karinchek, he reminds me of Mark Fidrich. <laughs> that, that's a good one. He's got some quirks and idiosyncrasies and he came in his first appearance of the season and switched his number to 99 and uh, the wild thing music is going on. So he looked just like Charlie Sheen, major league. And, um, you know, he's, he's been really good. And um, there's some pressure on him. I would say, um, you know, and maybe that's not fair to say, but um, they need him to be good to fill out that bullpen a little bit. Um, you know, he's a power arm, which, they don't have as many power arms as some other teams in the pen, and that's where the game's going. But he's legit power arm, mid-90s with that just hammer of a curve. And uh, this is a big season for him, um, not only personally, but to help the team. It's great to see Bradley Zimmer come back and contribute like he has after being down for such a long time. Yeah, you, you probably saw him more than most, Jim, and uh, it's been a long road back. Uh, you, you forget how excited the Indians were when he was first coming up and, and making a name for himself in the major leagues back in 17 and 18. And um, it took a, it was easy to forget that because of the injuries and it's been a while and there's been some other outfielders have come through and, and passed him. Um, I talked to him just as summer camp was starting. And, and the one thing that kind of stuck out to me um in addition to just, you know, he's healthy again, he just said, you know what, I need to get going. I, I need to start playing. He's not old, but he sees other outfielders in the system coming, and so I think he recognized that, and, and he's just ecstatic to be healthy again and just be able to work on his game so he can get going, and, and he's off to a great start. And that's, that's wonderful to see. It really is.
You know, what a shame for Tyler Nake when um, he gets the break of not having to start on time in April. Here he's ready to go, and then he has the unfortunate injury, found the ball off his foot. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, well, you hope it's just something small and, and, and that he'll be able to, to roll. And I think what we're going to see throughout this, Jim, is, is there'll be injuries. There, there might be a positive COVID test. Hope not. But there'll, there'll be injuries. Um, look, Roberto Perez is down already. Um, so they've had to dip into the, the catching depth. But uh, one thing they have is a lot of outfielders. So uh, <laughs> Naquin will be back, and, and, and he'll be a part of it for sure. But, um, you know, in the meantime, that's opened a door for, for Bradley Zimmer to see more playing time and for Daniel Johnson to get an opportunity. So, um, you know, Naquin will be back, and, and he'll be a part of this, I think, before it's all said and done. You know, say you win a Cy Young with maybe a Bieber, you win a championship, is it tainted? I don't think it is. Well, look, I, if you're not in Cleveland, you're going to say that for sure. Uh, but I think there's a, a prevailing thought, and, and this has been among some of the national pundits too. Um, you win this year? That's saying something. And I think we've we've seen the challenges already. I mean, there's one team that's lost games to the schedule already in the Miami Marlins because of COVID. Um this might be as hard a season as ever to win the whole thing, and now you have an extra tier of playoffs. So, yes, is it a is it a different season? It's only 60 games, and and is that going to hurt some teams that might have gotten in that won't? Sure. Um, you know, are there going to be some goofy things happening? Is the is the extra inning rule uh, something people like or not? All these things go into it. But the team that wins it at the end. They'll have had to go through some things that no other team has ever had to go through, and you got to tip your cap to that. So, um, look, here in Cleveland, if the Indians win it, <laughs> there's no asterisk at all. And, and I think around baseball there will be a, a lot of respect for the team that does win it all this year. Do you cringe when you see guys slap hands and get fives? It drives me crazy. <laughs> You know, I, I watched on, on Wednesday night late. I saw a highlight. I didn't stay up for the game, but I saw a highlight. Uh, Mike Iskremski, a great story with the Giants, uh, hit a walk-off home run and circled the bases, and they did the air high fives when he got to home plate. Everyone stayed away from him. There was no, you know, throwing the water on him or anything like that. They, they did a pretty good job with that, um, and it is odd. But the Indians are going with the, the you know, the, the toe tap of, or the foot tap, you know, when they come off the field after a win, and I think teams are being creative. Other teams are doing it. Um, high fives and stuff like that where I think it's just habit and they forget but um, you know it's all part of, of playing the game in the COVID era and and hopefully everyone stays safe throughout well, Rosie thanks for taking the time and I tell you stay safe and bring home a winner thanks Jim great to hear from you and thanks also to Rubber Ducks manager Ruga Sodor who joined Marco Lanave earlier in today's show Join us next Sunday at 6 for another edition of At Home with the Rubber Ducks. For Marco Lanave, I'm Jim Clark. So long, everybody. Thanks for listening to At Home with the Rubber Ducks. To listen to previous shows or for more Rubber Ducks baseball, follow the Akron Rubber Ducks podcast on the iHeartRadio app. For the latest on the team, go to AkronRubberDucks.com and follow the Akron Rubber Ducks on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Akron Rubber Ducks baseball, affordable family fun.